Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, May 11th, 528 a.m. Central Time. July corn futures down two and three quarters at 591 and a quarter. July soybeans down five and a quarter at 1398 and three quarters. July Chicago wheat down a nickel at 636 and a quarter. July Kansas City wheat down five and a half at 849 and three quarters. July spring wheat down seven and three quarters at 841 and three quarters. Mackenzie, we've got a USDA report uh, tomorrow. Why don't we start there? Yes, USDA will release its monthly crop production and WASD report on Friday morning. The report will include our first look at the new crop balance sheets for corn, soybeans, and wheat. USDA should start with trend yield numbers for corn and soybeans. There may also be adjustments to the demand side of the U.S. balance sheets. Many traders expect reduced old crop corn demand in particular. Okay, let's play a game here. Um, USDA is going to spit out a yield number for this year's U.S. corn crop, right? And this is the average trade guess, 180.7. Um, this is a graphic from USDA's uh, January report. Um, if you look at this gray line here, this is what they call the trend line. And uh, U.S. corn yields tend to trend higher over time. So looking at this gray line, which comes in right about 180 or above that uh, this year, if you had to make a guess, Mackenzie, this morning, oh boy. what is the corn yield going to be this year, knowing that on average, it's going to be, you know, it's going to increase to 180, 181. Would you deviate too far from 180 or 181 with your guess? Uh, I probably wouldn't, but I'm not the USDA. No, and, and you wouldn't. And why no. would you? You have no reason. The, the corn crop in real time is probably two thirds planted. So we're not even done with planting season. People yeah. get all worked up about this corn yield number, like what USDA is going to print in May when, uh, you know, they've got some fancier ways of guessing. They've got these different models and stuff. But in reality, I mean, the only thing that they have is, is it's really not any better than what we have. We can look at the trend line. They can look at the trend line. They've just got to start somewhere. So the trade on average thinks it's going to be 180.7. That's what they're going to start with. It, it should be north of 181. It should be closer to that ag outlook form number, which I think was 181 and a half. But no matter where it comes in, whether it's 180.7 or 181 and a half or 182 or whatever, I mean, does it really make a difference at this point in time? Nobody can predict the corn yield right now because nobody can predict what the weather is going to do in June or July. Your weather in June and July in particular is kind of what makes or breaks uh, the U.S. corn crop. So this is just it's just a guess guys and they, they don't have any way of guessing this better than we do i know it's such an area of contention and uh, i think i'm going to title this video this morning like guess the u.s corn yield and people are going to get all worked up about it because i'm going to put 181.5 in the picture but i mean it's just it's not anything to like even argue about at this point because we just don't we don't have enough to go off of uh, when you go down you look at some of the carryout estimates um the market's not we're expecting a u.s corn carryout number for this marketing year uh, 1.366 guys the market's trading a 1.5 um or or higher in my opinion uh the export number has to come down the ethanol number has to come down we'll talk about that in a little in a little bit here um when you look at new crop this two billion bushel uh carry out uh, what they're expected to print for corn is not a good look kind of a bearish look certainly um in the premium stuff yesterday i had matt bennett on and uh, we did a more detailed uh, kind of look at the um, USDA report, some of the things that we're thinking about ahead of the report. Remember, if you guys want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com this morning. Uh, you can sign up. This is a $50 per month subscription. Uh, cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. We'll send you all the premium videos. New one every single business day, morning email, all of that stuff. Uh, check it out today. Uh, it's raining this morning, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's pretty great. So rains have returned to the U.S. Plains and Western and the Western Corn Belt. Early this morning, rains are moving over parts of Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas should see the best amounts over the next few days. Areas of the central and eastern Corn Belt will see rain, however less by comparison. A drier pattern will emerge across most U.S. corn and soybean areas following this week's system. So even though uh, farmers in in some of these areas where it's going to be wet here today, even though they still need to plant uh, in, in a lot of cases and they're not done, this rain is still a welcome deal because it's been so incredibly dry in your neighborhood in Nebraska and other places 
of uh, South Dakota. Uh, if this thing makes its way into Kansas, which they're not really suggesting, Kansas isn't going to get nearly as much as, say, Oklahoma or Texas or places um, further north of that. But, I mean, all of these rains in this drought-stricken part of the southern plains, the central plains, into the northern plains, this is very much welcome stuff, even if it kicks planting back a little bit because it's been so incredibly dry. Uh, Eastern Corn Belt, Central Corn Belt, a little bit drier by comparison, but again, uh, we're gonna dry out here once you get into this like period from uh, say the 16th through the 24th, and, and it looks like through the end of the month really. So um, everything's gonna get in the ground uh, in most areas the way that it looks. There may still be some delays and maybe some prevent plant up north. That discussion's still very much uh, ongoing. Turkey believes that the Black Sea Green Deal could be extended. A top Turkish official said on Wednesday that the deal could be extended for two months. Officials from Ukraine, Russia, the United Nations, and Turkey are holding meetings in Istanbul this week. Russia declined to comment on the situation yesterday, other than an indication that negotiations are ongoing. I did not see anything across the wires early this morning. This may have changed by the time you guys uh, listen to this or watch, but um, they're negotiating. Um, the, the market has clearly exhibited to me, uh, the wheat market, the corn market, that it is not interested in the grain deal. What the market was interested in was that uh, supposed or alleged attack on the Kremlin uh, last week. Uh, Russia is a huge wheat exporter, 25% uh, global market share, whereas Ukraine's like less than 7%. So I just don't think the market's as worked up uh, about the grain deal as it would be, um, say, a potential Russian disruption, which would be catastrophic for uh, wheat supplies on the export market. So I don't know. I, I, I feel like this is going to be extended. That would be my guess. I feel like Russia's negotiating for a reason, but uh, we'll see what happens. I imagine we hear something about this uh, today in all likelihood. U.S. ethanol production decreased slightly week over week. Weekly output of 965,000 barrels per day was down 1.1% compared to the previous week and down 0.4% versus the same week last year. Ethanol stocks were pegged at 23.3 million barrels. The print was down 0.3% on the week and down 2.5% compared to the same week last year. Implied gasoline demand was up 8% on the week and up 5% versus the same week last year. On average, over the last four weeks, over the last four weeks, implied U.S. gasoline demand was up 2.1% versus the same period last year. These ethanol production numbers suck. Uh, we need to be above a million, and and we're not. And I don't know why they're not better. Um, we the margins are good, even out west where cash corn is strong. The margins are positive. Uh, my thought is that maybe the ethanol producer is having trouble getting their hands on the corn that they need. Maybe they're undercovered. I'm still hearing about basis pushes across the country uh, in regard to old crop corn. So this is bad because I think overall, like uh, accumulated for the marketing year, corn demand via ethanol, let's just say ethanol production, I think it's off like 3% versus the same period last year. And USDA says we're only going to be down 1.4, 1.5%. So I know that doesn't sound like a big difference, but you're talking, you know, it, it could be 50 million bushels on the balance sheet, could be more than that. And USDA, I think, will have to come down with their ethanol, uh, corn demand via ethanol number at some point. It may not be Friday, but unless you see a sharp improvement here, keep in mind the marketing year doesn't have all the time in the world anymore to catch up. I mean, this is a marketing year that ends August 31st. Uh, this is just, it's this is not where we need to be uh, at all. Consumer inflation declined in April to its lowest annual rate in two years. Inflation fell to an annual rate of 4.9% last month, down from a 5% increase in March. On a monthly basis, consumer prices increased 0.4% in April, up from a 0.1% gain in March. The monthly increase was caused by an uptick in housing costs and gas prices. Economists forecasted the CPI to climb 0.4% uh, in April and increase 5% on an annual basis. Inflation has cooled from its peak of 9.1% back in June of last year, but it is still pretty darn high. Inflation is not expected to return to the Fed's target rate of 2% for at least a few more years. I don't know if I agree with that last part about a few more years. It could happen sooner. Um, so here's your CPI chart. So we've been down... 10 consecutive months. We peaked at 9.1% June of last year. We're down to 4.9. Um, 
Uh, this will, this will, the Fed's going to pause because of this, the way that it looks. I mean, I think that there was, where's my, did I have my Fed tool chart? 92% chance that they pause in June, only an 8% chance that they, uh, hike in June. So I, I think it's, it's not a guarantee, but a damn near guarantee that they, uh, pause. This thing could, um, continue to come down. I had a really good chart in the newsletter this morning. It was, uh, I think it was CPI paired with the Bloomberg commodity index. I mean, commodities and inflation are like tied at the hip. Um, it's, it's commodities come first, like lower commodity prices will result in lower inflation. It's not the other way around, but we have seen uh, commodity prices back off, which has been a positive for the uh, inflation stuff, certainly. And we've got uh, PPI data out this morning as well. Yeah, the government will release monthly wholesale inflation data this morning at 730 Central Time. Traders expected that the uh, that the producer price index rose at an annualized rate of 2.4% in April versus 2.7% in March. So on the wholesale side, we're already damn close to the Fed's target of 2%. We're supposed to be 2.4% this morning, and this thing peaked at 11.7% uh, March of 2022. And in a lot of instances, uh, your wholesale inflation data will kind of be a precursor to what happens on the consumer side. So if we continue to kind of follow the trend here, and this thing does go down to 2.4 today on the wholesale side, that probably is indicative of a CPI number that continues to decline. Maybe you go from 4.9 to maybe it's four and a half the next month. I don't know. But um, this is all stuff that uh, is going to, in, in all likelihood, convince the Fed uh, to pause, to, to look around, see what happens. Some people think the Fed may uh, start cutting rates later this year. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, we do have a um, uh, export sales report this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. Corn sales for the current marketing or could be net negative, uh, maybe positive by 800. That's the range. Uh, Soy means 150 to 500 expected wheat sales. 75,000 to 300,000 expected. Uh, what did the cattle market do yesterday? Yeah, cattle futures were down for the most part on Wednesday. Feeder cattle futures closed an average of 91 cents lower, except for 25 cents higher in the back contract. Live cattle futures closed an average of 42 cents lower, except for 27 cents higher in the back contract. Fat cattle trade this week has been limited with too few of cattle being sold to set a trend. However, there were some early live sales in the Southern Southern Plains reported at 170 yesterday afternoon. Box beef values continue to trade sideways. Choice box beef was 57, excuse me, 51 cents lower on Wednesday afternoon at 306.87 and select was 35 cents lower at 284.54 uh, to close the day. I look at this June cattle chart that's on my screen. I see two different things. So we were able to hold this gap area on that sell-off that was like last week, which is a positive. But at the same time, you could probably draw a trend line off of this high and say like, oh, maybe we've begun to slope lower. It's kind of a, it's, it's, I guess I'm undecided on how I feel about that. Most of the time I can look at a chart and at least give you an opinion. I don't really have a strong one on that. Uh, outside markets this morning, guys, U.S. dollars higher. Uh, the S&P is up eight points. The Dow Jones is down just marginally bonds up a little bit. Gold and silver to down. Uh, crude oil is up 51 cents in the June WTI 7307. Have a great day today, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you on Friday.